Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Networking for Graduate Students presentation and workshop and mocktail event. Um, we are happy to have you here on this sunny day. Um, my name is Melissa Michelson. I work in Career Services. Some of you I've seen on, in one-on-one -on -one appointments um, or other events. You will see more of us this week as we're getting closer to career fair as well. Um, and Hi everyone, I'm Beth Williams. I know I've seen a few of you before, probably saw some of you at, no, a couple of you never seen, right, Sunit? Um, and I think we saw a few of you at our presentation that we had earlier today. Um, and this is our, actually our first time doing, I mean, we talk about networking all the time, but the first time that we've designed the presentation specifically for grad students. So you guys get to be our, our test run pilot group for this presentation. So are you ready? Learn how to network? Who's pumped about networking? All right, we got yeah. two and a half. All right, sounds good. That's, that's a probably better uh, probability than most of the other groups that we have, so. Okay, so just to begin, what is networking? Now, if we were to look at it as like a definition from a dictionary, it would look like this. The action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contacts. Makes sense? Is it easy? <laughs> Is it as easy as what it's stated in words like this? Who likes to network? Who can say that they love networking? Yeah, if you heard like there's a networking event on campus, how many of you are here like, well, you're all here, so obviously you did sign up for it. Yeah. So we often find that people hesitate to network or they might have kind of a bad taste in their mouth about networking. Maybe they're introverts and just have a really hard time initiating networking. Um, but what we like to encourage students to think about is that networking is actually asking for directions. So say that you were in a town that you had never been to and you needed to go to a destination and your smartphone just decided not to work and you could not get the directions that you needed. So you have to stop and ask someone on the street, complete stranger, someone you've never met before, to ask for directions. So how, how do you feel in that moment? How do you feel about that, asking for directions? I'm happy to do that. I wouldn't mind it. Right? pretty normal. How do you think the person you asked feels about your question? Do you think they walk away going, oh, that person just used me for my information? <laughs> or, you know, they despise it in any way. How dare Melissa ask me where the library is and then just walk away to get the library? I can't believe never, that. Never to see me again. Yeah. I feel important. Right? You usually, you, people like to help other people. If you are asked to talk about yourself, um, we usually are happy to do that. If someone is truly interested in where we've been and what we know and how to get there, they're usually really, really responsive to those types of questions. And so we encourage people to, to view networking as asking for directions. All right, we're gonna kind of begin it that way so that we can kind of get a little bit more comfort around the whole thing for those of us that aren't as comfortable. So a few t or, um, facts, I guess, on networking. Why is networking important? What's, what's the big deal? Everybody hear about networking, uh, but why is, why is it important? So 70 to 80% of jobs are not posted online. Um, it's actually probably closer to about 82% of jobs are not posted online. Um, so when there was a survey that went out and they asked people, in the job search process, um, what do you think is the most important way for you to, to get a job or that you have gotten a job. 46% of people said networking, 25% said job boards. So their most important job search tool was networking, um, much higher over the job boards, which is often how we think of applying for jobs is that. In addition to networking, we think sometimes it's, you know, these formal events where you're meeting recruiters or you're going to a conference, but networking can include a lot of scenarios, and we'll talk about some of those in a minute. Sometimes it's really just to expand your knowledge. It might not be that you're looking for a job, but it's a great way to just 
learn about somebody who is doing research in your industry or just networking with someone who is, you know, in a field that might be of interest to you. So it's a great way to expand your knowledge. Again, it's a great way to, sh to share your professional aspirations with people. So what do you plan to do post-graduation? Um, what are those, those professional aspirations? Share those with people. Sometimes you might get feedback. They may connect you to somebody else. They may know of job opportunities, but it's a great way just to practice sharing those things. Um, and then if any of you were interested in starting your own business later on, in order to start your own business, networking is obviously a very incredible uh, or incredibly important aspect of that. To add to this too, when a recruiter is looking for candidates for to fill a position, who do you think they would more likely um, respond to? Somebody who can just come up and be themselves and be able to have a conversation with or, or just kind of um, rely on that piece of paper resume or cover letter example and not know anything about that person. I mean, I guess that's not really a question, but I, I guess what I'm saying is recruiters, people who are looking for individuals to fill spots or to, um, are more likely to hire someone that they've had a connection with. There are plenty of robots out there, right? And our, our pieces of paper that we use to apply online are not people. And so we really, really want to get the, us, you know, who we are as human beings in front of other human beings. <laughs> so we want to go through and talk about what are some expectations for communication? And what are some things that we don't want to do when we're communicating with others? Um, so one area that, that we actually discussed in length as we were kind of talking about this presentation is how do you address people? So when we go down to, we're, we're going to talk to you all about networking for a little bit, and then we're actually going to go down to a practice networking event in the, right after this. Um, and we're going to ask that all of you have a name tag. We actually have name tags that we can print downstairs. You can print your career fair name tag today. Just get that all squared away and use that uh, for this event. But part of that is how do you address people? And so most formal networking events, you'd probably be wearing a name tag. If it's a conference, you'd have your badge. If it's another professional event, you'd have your, don't mind me, I, I actually lost my name tag. I don't know which, which outfit I last had it on, so this is mine for the you know, time being. But normally at another event, we would have our formal you know, name tags on there. But when you're going to address people, particularly at something like an academic conference, what do you think is the best way to address somebody? The first name. First name? Anything preceding the first name? That you never know if they're a doctor or a mister, so I just go by the first name. Okay. So what happens if you don't know if they're a doctor? What, what do you think the best option might be? Mr. Mr. Smith. So some of them on their name tag, if their name tag says doctor whatever, that is how I would address them. If it doesn't, now we've had a variety of opinions on this. At most of the conferences, industry conferences that Melissa and I go to, typically you go by your first name. Like, hi, I'm Chuck. I don't know why Chuck came to me the first name came to my mind. Could have said Beth, but, uh, but you know, it's usually you're, you're just introducing your first name, however, or if you're shaking hands and they introduce themselves, that's a great way for you to say, you know, hi, I'm Beth. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Melissa. Then I would go. Hi, nice to meet you, Melissa. Not, hi, nice to meet you, Dr. Michelson. Like I would go with whatever she introduced herself as. But for academic conferences and particularly with faculty members as well, we kind of always tend to say it's better to say doctor and have them say, oh, no, no, you don't have to call me doctor, than to make the faux pas of not calling someone a doctor and have them correct you and say, you know, you do not need to call me James, it's doctor, whatever. That's always like a, ooh, ooh, okay, sorry. So we always say it's better to shy towards addressing someone as doctor in the academia world and have them say, no, don't worry about calling me doctor. Then again, to say, actually, you need to be a little bit more formal with me. Does that make sense? <coughs> For, uh, during one of the conferences, someone called me a doctor. I was weird. So I was just wondering if somebody is not a doctor, let's say just a master, <coughs> like that, wouldn't that be weird for them too? Then you can just say, no, you can just call me student. Okay. It's always better to be like, to say, oh no, that's okay. You can, you can be less formal with me. 
than to have someone say, uh, you are being too informal. Okay. You need to address me at a little higher standard yeah. kind of thing. It's always better to be like, oh, wow, you think I'm a doctor? Great, thank you, I'm not, so you can just call me back. Um, so in certain circles, that's really important. It's yeah. very important. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Other, qu yeah. So here's a question. Uh, so you said when you go introduce yourself or, or somebody, somebody approaches you and kind of shake hand with you, what if you can't shake hands? Yeah, we can, we're actually going to go through and talk about handshaking in just a little bit, so we'll get to but that. But as a cultural... Um, or religious. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't considered that one yet. And it may even be one of those things, too, that if it's helpful, like typically if, if I go up to meet Melissa and I say, Hi, it's nice to meet, to meet you, and Melissa's kind of standing or holding something, so if she's at a conference and she's got her hands full, I'm not going to try to go and shake her hand. And that's not understood. Let's say you're a Muslim. Yep. A girl or a boy, whatever. Yeah. A girl is easier because probably they can understand you uh, from the wearing scarf and stuff. Yeah. But sometimes it might not be appropriate to shake hand with a girl if you're a boy, for example. Sure. Or vice versa. So what do you do if somebody approaches you with a hand? That's what I was saying, it, and it's, it's really, I haven't run into that, to be totally honest, as far as what is the best cultural, um, how to be culturally appropriate with it. But one thing that you could, what I was thinking of is, if, if it's offered for you to say, you know, no thank you, I don't want to shake your hand, or how do you address that? If you have something in your, if you're not willing to shake, or not, you know, you can't shake someone's hand, to be holding something, or, you know, even have a folder with you. So it's kind of showing, like, I'm not, reaching out not available hand. to shake hands so you can actually take the initiative to sh without having to say it out loud it's like you make sure that you have something in your hand or you know so if i'm going like this and i melissa comes to meet me and she says you know hi it's nice to meet you and i'm kind of like have my hands full or something it's not even an option for her to to shake it so that could be one strategy to use but i'll have to, we'll have to think about that a little bit more and get back to you on that too and you kind That's of get, get some ideas on what other people have done because in like um, in certain settings, of course, that um, don't always have something in your hand. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So so it, it, it will take some strategy because I uh, would venture to say that a, a lot of people wouldn't know about that. Also, yeah. right? It, 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 we wouldn't know, so it wouldn't. Um, so we have to yeah get some more information. Anybody have a, any ideas yeah. on that one? So, so I'm um, asking this because no. sorry, I'm asking this because it's happening to me a lot, sure. a lot. So mm -hmm. I cannot shake hands with girls okay. religiously. Sure. And what I do is it's like apologize and say sorry, I cannot shake hands with you. Yeah. But sometimes it works. Yeah. But some people understand, and others don't. It happens, you know. One of actually my wife's advisor, who is very harsh, and she's still mad at me after six months. So. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to do, you know, I don't yeah. want to create those mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, and then there's some, there's certain things with like, I mean, really, any social interaction, there's going to be some people who understand it and some people who don't. And you can't necessarily always control what their reaction to it is going to be. Right. What you can control is <laughs> how you deliver it. And I think even just saying that, like, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm not able to do that. Like, that's okay. Because I even... There's a, other reasons where people might not be able to, to shake hands with people for, you know, reasons too. I think just saying, sometimes just saying that if you're comfortable to do that. Um, and again, if, if they don't understand it or respect it, that's more on them than it is on you. You were going to say something though. Yeah, um, I guess I've been in situations when a lot of my professional contacts and also my friends have um, beliefs that... Um, that are not in favor of shaking hands or physical proximity, hugging, any of those things. Mm -hmm. So um, the way we usually deal with it is when you're meeting somebody at a conference or at a networking event, you're not just meeting them as a professional, but also as a person. So it's an opportunity to discuss your culture, talk about it. And every culture has a way of greeting people. It may not be a handshake. It could be um, something different, something that doesn't involve any physical contact. Yeah. And maybe that's one way to do it. You tell them, this is this is another way to do it. This is how we do it. Yes, yeah. totally. Yeah, it can be a really great educational moment and may even provide something to 
you know, kind of break the ice or talk about a little bit yeah. too, but yeah, that's a really good question. So actually kind of moving on, is there any other comments? So moving on to the next part is talking about personal space. And there is sort of, especially I would say here in the U.S., there's sort of like a standard of what's comfortable personal space, and that's very different culturally between places as well. Um, but I would say if you're, you know, if I, like probably a comfortable networking space is probably about, yeah, no. <laughs> 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 but like probably not, like if I was talking to, talk to Melissa at a conference and I didn't know her, this is probably a pretty typical, you know, place. But if you notice that the person keeps going like, or first check your breath because it might be that I just didn't have the onion dip. Um, but it also may be that, that some people just aren't close with that. So take the cue from the other person. I mean, if they keep kind of backing away, it's not like you want to keep <laughs> inching <laughs> forward. Kind of keep inching forward. Um, but that is, you know, a pretty typical space. And you can also kind of gauge. I mean, it's hard. So I'm a little bit hard of hearing. And when I'm at a conference, if it's if there's a lot of noise going on, I have a really hard time hearing people mm -hmm. and so a lot of times what I have to do is I have to I do kind of have to like lean in or for me I read lips sometimes as well if it's really loud and so I do have to like be a little bit more you know I might not stand as close to Melissa but I may have to like lean in a little bit more just so I can hear her and understand what she's saying so there are like some of those things a cue too if you if you're having a hard time hearing someone but you don't really want to step closer you know maybe you can turn your ear toward them and that's another yeah. like cue like, a little body kind of language a little bit louder, cue to, to, to speak up a little bit so there's that whole like emotional social intelligence around this whole interaction as well to to watch for those kinds of cues as you um are talking yeah. so the next one is thinking about personal hygiene which is a an important piece as i was just telling you about breath um, so we were kind of laughing when Jacob's like, well, yeah, we have onion dip and now we're all going to go and introduce ourselves and talk to people. So we do have mints for all of you before we go downstairs to the networking thing. Um, but that is something as you're thinking about going to a conference or a networking event, if you know that you're going to that, carry mints with you. And sometimes it's easier than carrying, you know, might be easier than carrying gum sometimes too, because then it's that like, what if there's food now, do I just spit it out or what do I do with my gum? but have mints with you or a way that you can freshen your breath, especially if there's coffee in the morning or a dinner or something like that. And then everybody's kind of talking to each other like this because they all know their breath kind of stinks. Um, so that's one, you know, one kind of thing to keep in mind with personal hygiene. Also, if you tend to uh, be a nervous sweater, <laughs> sweater, make sure that, you know, you keep that in mind and have some things to refresh yourself with. Um, that doesn't always mean putting another layer of cologne or perfume on either because that can be um, that can be on the other end of the spectrum of personal hygiene where you're a little um, fragrant on that end. So um, all of these within reason and with balance are just very um, just things to keep in mind. So when I go to conferences, a lot of times I'll have like in a little bag or whatever, I'll have mints, but I'll also keep one of those like little things of deodorant, mm -hmm. especially if it's a hot room, you're around a lot of people, I know I get nervous, then I can just quick go in the bathroom, put deodorant on, make sure I at least smell decent, especially if you're standing in close quarters with somebody else, that can be an important thing. The last thing you want is to go and introduce yourself and have the person back away because they're like, oh man, you smell real sweaty right now. Um, so make sure that you're kind of freshen up with that too. So this is another one that's kind of hard. If you go to a networking event by yourself, when do you join in on a conversation? And that is something that it does take a little bit of finesse. A lot of people are going like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm still not always good about it. Um, but it, that is again where it's, it's kind of an important thing to like sort of watch what other people are doing, but also take the social cues from others. So let's say that Melissa, if Melissa and I, actually, Jake, can we use you for a second? So let's say that you and Melissa are in a conversation and I'm kind of alone and I sort of want to mix and mingle. So you guys are talking to each other so, right now. But so gonna, I could. We're going to demonstrate yeah. two different ways. Right? Yeah. So if I, if they're interested in talking to me and I kind of come up. <laughs> Hi. So, so they can kind of open themselves, right? right? Like, or kind of look at you or, or sort of like bring you into the conversation. But if they're talking to each other and they are clearly not interested in talking to me, it might be like that. One 
like closed <laughs> are obviously having a conversation <laughs> that <laughs> is important. Like you're not going to like, but I've seen people do that. I've seen people like, no, I'm going to talk to you and I'm just going to lightly <laughs> slide my head into the group. Um, so take their cues from them. And obviously it's like kind of a goofy demonstration, but you can kind of see sometimes too if, if someone is there and they're willing to kind of open it up or they may be continuing their conversation, but they're kind of glancing at you. That's their way of like slowly kind of starting to bring you in a little bit um, versus if they kind of look at you and they do one of these and they slowly turn, like take that as your cue to like, okay, I'm just gonna walk over this way and join another group. Um, it can be an, an awkward thing sometimes, but if you're in a networking, thank you, Jacob, you can take a seat. Thank you for your, your networking demonstrations. Um, if you are at a networking event though too, and you see like you're, you're alone, how do you start talking? Sometimes if there's like a group of people, more than just two people in a conversation, that almost makes it a little easier sometimes. Um, but the other thing is maybe there's somebody who's sort of just standing off to the side of the food line. Those are the people that I always am like, you know, let me just go, oh my gosh, look at the food that's here. Is this your first time at the conference? Like it gives you a chance to sort of chat with people a little bit. So um, you'll be able to sort of see, you know, kind of see the people that you want to start conversations with. But again, it's a lot of it is watching those social cues from others. The other thing I would say too, is if you're in a conversation and you're open to having somebody else join you, like, and you see that kind of person sort of slowly trying to walk up and join your group, turn and include them in the conversation. Or even as you're talking with the other person, be looking at them. That's kind of an invite to like, hey, you join our conversation. We'll practice that today. You'll get to kind of practice that a little bit too, but questions about those. All right, so you had just asked about this. Um, so a proper handshake, and again, this is can be very, you know, cultural in a lot of ways. So what we will talk about right now is what is the cultural way um, in the United States that we typically will say is the proper way to, to shake a hand. Um, for a industry or um, you know conference type of event, if you are okay to shake hands, um, and so we kind of show like some of the like awkward example. Most people aren't going to come up like, "Hey, Melissa, nice to meet you." I mean, maybe we would do that, but most people won't. So there is a proper way to shake a hand. Do you all feel like you know how to properly shake a hand? You're like, well, I don't know unless you tell us for sure that I think I know what it is. So the proper way to shake a hand is web to web contact. Your web should touch their web. It's a real <laughs> creepy way to say it, but now you're not gonna forget that. So web to web contact, parallel thumbs. So Melissa's not grabbing my hand like this. Cause this, this is an assumption of dominance if my hand is over the top. So that's like a body language cue. Yeah. <laughs> and then this then would be a thing. Yeah. Dominance, but then submission on my part, like I'm submitting. So usually it's just this. This is what we would look for. Around. And, the, and the other thing is, it's usually probably two to three pumps is your typical handshake. But we see this a lot too. The, like have you ever shaken, that's what we call the dead fish. Yeah. Um, when you yeah. shake somebody's hand, that's just, it's like, ooh, that was kind of like, <laughs> gotta wash my hands. It just felt creepy with that. Um, but you have the other ones that are very, Forceful and, and like, like tight, too tight. Yeah, like to the point where I'm like, okay, that kind of hurt a little bit. The other thing that I would say though on that one too is again, take the cue from the other person, much like you were mentioning, take the cue from them. If they're not willing to shake hands. The other thing is during cold season, I don't shake people's hands. When they come in for one-on-one -on -one appointments, I don't shake people's hands when they come in. Um, so sometimes when I go to get people for their one-on-one -on -one appointments, I might even say, you know, hi, it's so nice to see, or nice to meet you. I bet that I might just kind of give my introduction without putting my hand out, or I'll be honest and just say, you know what, with it being cold season, I'm not gonna shake your hand, I hope you don't mind, I'm not feeling really well, come on into my office. <laughs> I'm not feeling well, come on in. Um, but, but I wouldn't you know, shake their hand at that point too. So you take the cue from the other people. But the other thing that I've learned too is, um, like my mom has arthritis, so it's really, her hands are really sore a lot. And she has had that where, especially particularly it tends to be males or someone with a bigger hand my mom is a little bit smaller will grab her hand and kind of shake it hard and she has to shake people's hands very lightly because it really hurts her hands and so it's also important to take into consideration if they lightly shake your hand don't like okay no this is not how we shake hands let me do it a little bit you know 
take their cue and go with it as well. Um, that's kind of, again, a lot of, a lot of networking is taking cues from the other people. Questions about the proper handshake now that we know web to web. Yeah, so um, just a little something to add to that. A lot of these networking events at conferences and the one like you planned tonight are over drinks mm -hmm. or over dinner. So I try to hold my beer in my left hand so my right hand is not drenched and full of condensation and ice cold when I'm shaking somebody's yeah. hand. I'm so glad you said that. So tonight downstairs, we have, um, we just have like simple soft drinks, yes. soft drinks and yeah. stuff. But so you can practice if you were to have a cup. So typically you're right, it is shaking with your right hand. Um, and so you're, you would have your drink in your left hand or we have like high top tables for tonight too so that you can Put your drink down and introduce yourself to people but it is hard sometimes you may have a plate of food in your hand and a drink and most people would typically not say like no move that over i need to shake your hand and you're trying to like juggle everything um but it is especially if it is just one item that's a good a good reminder i'll also say as we talked about if you're a nervous sweater the sweaty palmers how many of you are self-declared sweaty palmers like yeah there's like most people aren't gonna admit that right away. Or I, I get very cold hands too. But when I get nervous, I get sweaty palms. And so what you, you don't wanna like shake somebody's hand there afterward, you're like, ooh, that was kinda gross. So what we always suggest too, if you know you get nervous and you happen to have sweaty palms, as you're standing there waiting to meet people, it's okay to just slowly stand there and kinda air out your hands like this. It doesn't make it like it's super obvious. Or if you know you're gonna shake somebody's hand, and just kinda do the light wipe on hands. <laughs> yeah, you don't wanna do one of these. like. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. I'm just wiping off the sweat real quick. But if I were to go up to Melissa and I'm going up to her and I just kind of do one of these really quick, very lightly, or I'm airing it out as I'm, t you know, you don't, you don't need to stand there, but you can just kind of stand in line a little bit, but keeping your palms out instead of clenched, uh, which is another thing that we tend to do when we're nervous, can make that a little bit easier too. All these things that you might not have thought about before, and now you're like, do I have sweaty palms? Okay. So keeping track of time here, because we want to make sure we've got time for questions and that sort of thing. So we're going to go through these, some of these a little bit quicker too, but so we want to give you some tips for networking at conferences. We know that that's one kind of big area for those of you who are, you know, graduate students and beyond as you're going to some of these events. Um, so what we say is have clear goals and objectives. Know what is your purpose for going to this conference. Are there certain people that you know are going to be there that you're interested in meeting with? and make that kind of a priority. Are you there to get a job? You know, that hoping to network for a job? Are you there because you're trying to find other people who are in your field of research? Are you truly there just to kind of get that experience of practicing and networking and meeting other people? So what are your goals and objectives and kind of going into it with, with that idea in mind? Go prepared. So know what your conference sessions are. When are those networking events? Um, I'm, am I going to be in a, in close conversation with other people? So that's time to bring my, my mints or my deodorant, have an idea of, you know, kind of what that conference is going to include. Usually they have a list of events too. So it gives you an idea. Um, send an email or a LinkedIn, a LinkedIn message prior to the event. If you know that there's people that you really want to make sure that you want to meet while you're there, send them a message and say, I was wondering if you're planning on attending the XYZ conference next week. I really would love to chat with you more about your research. Let me know if you have some time and maybe we can meet up. Because sometimes trying to find people, if it is a bigger conference, can be hard. Or they're busy in a conversation with someone else and so, you know, you're waiting in line to chat with them. But you could always send them a message and just say, you know what, why don't during a coffee break, I'd love to meet with you at the entrance, um, you know, of the ballroom area and maybe we can grab a coffee during that point and chat. So kind of scheduling some of those things out ahead of time can also be helpful. Be approachable. So that sounds like obvious. We all, most of us feel like we're approachable, but if your goal is networking and you're sitting at your table and you're on your phone the whole entire time, you're not somebody that I'm going to go, Oh, that person looks like they want to chat with somebody. <laughs> I think I'm going to go and talk to them. Um, and so, you know, rather than sitting under, that's what we all tend to do is when we're by ourselves or we're awkward, we're on our phone like this, nothing about that says, person is looking to chat with other people versus kind of standing there. You know, it might feel a little bit awkward, but if you're standing there smiling at people or you're kind of walking, sometimes even I'm like, I don't want to just stand there. I'll just sort of walk or pretend like I'm doing something and I'll like walk around the room a little bit. That's a lot more approachable than someone who's just sitting on their, they're on their phone or 
totally giving this vibe too. Don't be a fan girl or a fan guy. And what we mean by that is, especially at conferences, there may be that one person who is like the guru in your field and everybody knows this person, you know they're gonna be there. I've totally had these people at the conferences that I've been at like, I have got to go and meet this person. And there's a group of 20 people surrounding them. Um, what you know, it's not, oh my gosh, I'm so crazy about you, blah, blah, blah. Um, hopefully you don't say that, but, but the other thing is too, sometimes if you're so focused on trying to connect with just that one person, you also might be missing opportunities to actually be meeting with other people who may be just as important. So it's okay to, you know, to intentionally try to meet that person that might be at the conference, but open yourself to talking to others too and not just that one person. And it might even be a couple of you are waiting to chat with someone. And so Melissa and I both went and talked to the same person. So I ended up talking to Melissa and realized we're both interested in talking to the guru. Then, you know, we probably have something in common as well. And I could learn something from Melissa. Get on lists for conference dinners, meetups, and socials. Depending on the conference, oftentimes there's like additional things. There's a networking event or, yeah, student. Um, so on point number five, yeah. what, what's the limit on that? Can you still tell them that, you know, you really appreciated that book or something? You totally, I mean, you totally can. Like, oh, I, I read your, you know, book. I really appreciate what you have to do. Or, I, you know, I love the information that you have about this topic or whatever. Okay. You just don't want to be like, oh my gosh, the only reason I came to this conference was just because of you and going, you know, kind of nuts over them. It's more also saying that, like, don't miss opportunities with others as well. But, oh, for sure, you can let them know you know their research and you appreciate what they do. Okay. Good point. So if there's any of these additional events, a chance for dinner, setting up for dinners or meetups or other networking events, um, and your goal really is to go there and build your networking experience or build your network itself, sign up for those things. Map out your schedule. We talked a little bit about that ahead of time. Check name tags. We talked about that. Don't forget to pack the essentials, including, like as we said, deodorant, business cards, a pen. Um, those can sometimes be essentials, a notebook or, or the conference itinerary. A lot of them are on mobile apps, but bring those things as well. Um, bring business cards and contact information. I can't tell you how many times I have forgotten that. And all these people that, oh, you have a business card? And you have to say, like, no, let me write my info down on a napkin for you really quick. Um, but it's, or let, give me yours and now I'll go back to the office and try to send you that information. So having business cards is a really good thing to do, especially if you know you're going to go and network with quite a few people. Again, follow up after the conference. That's usually when I add a lot of people to LinkedIn. So I'll go on a day or two after the conference and just say, it was really nice to meet you at the you know, MSTA conference this past weekend in Grand Rapids. I really appreciated your conversation about blah, blah, blah. I'd love to add you to my network. That's a great way to like immediately sort of respond to them and then you can keep in touch from there. Develop your elevator pitch, which is your, um, you know, your personal introduction, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So we'll get to that. And the other thing is introduce people to each other. It's not always about you needing to meet everybody um, or maybe everybody needing to meet you, but it might be introducing each other. Like, Oh, Melissa, it's so funny that you were just saying that you were really interested in maybe starting up a nonprofit. I don't know if you've met Shelly over there, but Shelly actually started one. Let me introduce you guys if you don't mind. That's the cool part about networking is it's not always just about what you need. If you can connect other people to each other, that's really when the networking events are the, are the best is when you can help people meet other people and what their needs are too. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question. It's not on here, but you know, just out of curiosity. So when I talk to people at conferences, I make it a point to you know note it down somewhere what we discussed, so I can you know when I send them a LinkedIn request or something, I can you know, refer to that. What is the socially acceptable norm? On you know, I cannot just literally stand in their face and start writing. So you know, what's the socially accepted norm that okay, I be at least you know ten feet away or something so that they you know when I start writing stuff down. Of writing notes down about like, your for example, like career fair. Yeah, I'm meet, meeting with people. I want to write down what I talked about. Yeah, career fair is a great example. Yeah, you're not going to sit there like, okay, hi, Jacob, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> but what I might do is take his card, and it, sometimes for me, especially if there's a lot of stuff going on, I have to like say it in my mind, like apply tonight. Okay, I need to. Use, here's the three things I want to write down my card, and then I may. There's so many people at career fair, obviously, you know that. But just stepping away from the table so that you're kind of out of their view and they're on to the next conversation, and jot it down quick. But if you go to another table. 
you might not forget what table one had already said. Yeah. So it's okay to step back at a conference. It might be, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I will totally send that PowerPoint presentation to you. Just gonna write myself a quick note. I've even done that too. But if it's more about conversation, just step away or step into the hall or back to your table or whatever it is. But there's not like a 10 foot right. rule. I don't know that there's that many people watching that closely either. You know, unless it's blatantly obvious that you're taking notes on everything they're saying. And I don't think I'd be like, oh, oh that's, it's, that's it's, a, I wouldn't think like that's yeah. interesting. Soon it just talked to me and now he's writing something down. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, good. He's probably going to connect with me. Yeah. Now, right. it's, it's usually about, I mean, if they've asked me to share something, you know, if I talk to them about my research or something and they yeah. want to know more about it. Yeah. So, you know, I told them, I always tell them that, okay, I'll send you an email. Yeah. That's all I'm writing down that okay. Totally. I mean, yeah. that's all I'm writing. I would literally walk away right as you're walking yeah. away from them and they're on to the next person. I would be okay. writing it right then. And then they see like, oh good, you're gonna remember to do that. Okay. Were you gonna say something? Oh, I was just saying because most of the people expects you to ask for their uh, business Arts. cards, even yep. if they don't offer you. You can just ask them for that's what I do. You can just ask them, just go to a site, just write, you know, three points yep. back of the card and then you can go and then you know repeat. Or just elaborate it on your own. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's what I usually yeah. do. That's what I do too. Yeah. But I was just wanting to make sure that you know, yeah. that's the right way to do. <laughs> it they expect you to do that most of So sample conference conversation starters. Because sometimes that's all the awkward part is like, how how do I start talking to somebody? Um, so here's potential questions. Oh, so what you know, what school or what company or you know, what industry are you from? So how long have you been at that? You know, oh, that's neat that you're at X, Y, and Z company. How long have you been there for? Um, oh, and you've only been there for a year? Where were you before that? That's, I, I use those three all the time. Um, oh, so what brought you to this conference? What made you interested in this? What were you hoping to get out of this conference? Have you had a chance to do that yet? Because that can kind of open up. You already have something in common. You're all there, the same place. Um, what sessions or speakers are you planning to go to? So especially if there's, you know, you're on a morning break and there's a session coming right afterward. Oh, so what session are you planning to go to next? Oh, I was thinking about that one. I think I might do this one instead. Like that can be a good kind of conversation starter for people too. So what have your, been your favorite parts of this conference so far? Or this is another one too, like, so, and I wouldn't start out with this one right away, but yeah, I'm really trying to improve my skills in this area. Um, are you doing anything with that? Or do you have any tips? It seems like you have a lot of experience in that. Do you have any tips for me? You have to kind of see if this one feels like the right, the right thing too, but that can be a great way to, to share with them what you're looking for. And do they have any advice for you? Keeping track of time. So I'm kind of keep moving, but any questions on the conversation starters? Seem pretty doable, right? Sick. Nothing too scary. This is my field right here. Introverts. <laughs> that is me. Um, so networking for introverts can be actually kind of painful sometimes. Small talk for me is it hurts. <laughs> I don't. I'm like a. I, I like to dive deep and fast, and so to come up with ways to actually have more intimate conversations with people in an, a large event like that can be really tricky. So um, there are some tricks that you can just um, keep in mind. Planning ahead is, is really important to kind of gear yourself up knowing that this is going to be uncomfortable and that you can um, maybe think about the things that you've heard throughout the conference that day and maybe kind of get those conversations and maybe those conversation starters in mind well beforehand. Um, I would also say with that too, it might even be if you're looking at the schedule and you realize it's packed event after packed thing and you know like, I go to this conference event, I am not gonna be like at my best right now. You know what, it may be Pick worth it. Choose and choose or go back to your room for 15 and gather mm -hmm. yourself or whatever you might need to do so that you can be on yeah. when you need to be. Get a conference buddy. Sometimes um, right off the bat it can be really easy to find someone that you can relate to and hang around with that person and make them kind of that person that you feel comfortable walking through and networking with and then meeting new people together with as well. Be sure to smile um, even if it doesn't come naturally. <laughs> <laughs> just try to do it because it um, makes you more approachable, but it also can relax you as well to remind yourself that, okay, I'm, I'm okay, I can, I can do this, and it just helps open you up as well. 
challenge yourself. So I was um, in the rosé at a networking event and um, one of our colleague, our co-workers was with me and I said, oh, I just can't. This is so hard for me to do. And he, he actually is the one who challenged me. He said, you know, I'll be right here, but I challenge you to go meet two new people. And so I have adopted that challenge for myself too. So I did, it, it wasn't easy, but it didn't kill me either, right? So that's what you realize afterwards. Is that actually, it gets, it's a lot easier every time you do it. And it wasn't as bad as I was imagining it to be. So um, challenge yourself beforehand. Maybe it's four people that you want to meet during this entire conference. Maybe it's one at this networking event. Be present. So I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're in a conversation with someone, sometimes we're thinking about what, okay, what am I supposed to say next? And you're not actually in the moment. You're not actually having a conversation because the words might be coming out of your mouth, but your mind is <laughs> somewhere else. So work on just being there in the moment and letting the conversation unfold rather than try to plan ahead for everything and not be there. And that kind of spills into this stop networking, start connecting. So if small talk is not your thing and it feels like superficial, just try to think about how, how can we connect rather than just network. Um, and always remember that we have something to bring to the table. All of us have unique talents, unique gifts, um, unique personalities, and we have um, something to give and contribute to wherever we are. Conversation starters for introverts. I like this first one because it's honest and it starts off by just saying these networking events can be so crazy. Mind if I join you over here where it's a little quieter and you can have just a moment where it's a little bit more intimate because it's maybe just one other person and you, you can talk a little bit more closely, a little bit more quietly. Um, compliment people on their clothes or accessories. It might start off as kind of superficial, but it might be a way, an easy way to have a start a conversation. I do that one in, when I'm, there's always a line in the ladies' bathroom at conferences, and I always do that like, oh my gosh, your purse is so cute, where did you, you know, and we, usually it's like, that's like a weird thing, but that's just an easy way to start connecting with people, so but it can be an easy thing if you don't know how to start a conversation. I was just reading an article about this as well, and they were, uh, one of the, the topic lines said, dare to be honest. And so that might just be another way to start a conversation like this last one. To be honest, this type of event is pretty overwhelming for me, but I've heard some very interesting information at the sessions that I just attended. And that can be a way, first of all, you can talk about, you might have something in common by the fact that it feels overwhelming to both of you, but then it, you can also talk about the interesting information that you just heard and open up a conversation that way. Um, so additional conversation starters, and these are things for, you know, that maybe that non, um, the non-conference type setting. So I'm thinking like downstairs when we go down there a little bit. Um, just so you know, there's going to be a couple faculty members that will be downstairs. We have representatives from Kimberly Clark here as well. And they're not there to, to chat with you about jobs at Kimberly Clark. They're there to help you practice networking. Um, and then some of our staff will be there as well. Um, so it might not be, what brought you to this conference today? Obviously, we're not at a conference. Um, but what you can say is, or even, what brought you here today? They're probably going to say, Beth and Melissa told us that we had to be here. Um, but it could be so much to you, you know, so I see that you work at Kimberly Clark. What do you do there? That'd be an easy thing to do, right? Um, so how did you hear about this event? Again, probably going to say yes, but that's a good practice one. Oh, what a, again, for career services, what a beautiful venue. <laughs> Have you been here before? <laughs> some of these might not have worked for today, but it gives you an idea. But I've had that where I've been to some really cool places, and it's, oh, have you ever been here before? Um, I've even, I've even said, you know, oh, is this your, have you been to, I just was in a conference in, in New Orleans. Oh, have you been to New Orleans before? Um, what did you, do? you check out any restaurants afterward? Any good dinner recommendations? Like, Sometimes that can be a really easy thing to sort of chat about too. Um, I was just in a, a conference in India as well, and so they would always say, you know, is this your first time? What do you think about the food? What's been the most surprising part to you? And that was like such an easy way to have conversations with people. Um, the other one is like, 
obviously this is not just like a random statement here. This is in context. But if you're standing, you know, in the food area and obviously you've got your dinner plate, it's, oh, the salad is, is really great. Did you get a chance to try that? So sometimes talking about like what the food is or whatever can be a, an easy way to sort of break the ice a little bit. Obviously we all know we can talk about weather, uh, but you can talk about the location. So even as you're going downstairs right now, and you know that Kimberly Clark folks are going to be there. It's okay to say, oh, so did you, were you here for Winter Carnival Week? Did you get a chance to see the statues? Like, you have that whole kind of topic to talk about with them a little bit. Um, or so did you go to Michigan Tech yourself? Um, you know, those are some simple kind of easy ways to ease into a conversation with them too. What not to talk about? Politics, religion, guns. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. In this country, typical we tend, tend to yes, shy away from. One other thing that I'll mention in this one as well is, and we didn't have like a slide for this, but is also thinking about alcohol etiquette. Um, so at some conferences, or actually quite often at conferences, there may be like um, an open an open bar type of scenario, and we, you know, well if it's an open bar, that doesn't mean like a yes free for all. I am gonna go <laughs> crazy. It is still a professional event and you still need to treat it as a professional event. So oftentimes I'll go, Melissa, I've been to quite a few where there's been wine. You know, I'll stand in the wine line and maybe talk, that's a great time to talk to people while you're waiting in line for things. And I'll have one glass of wine and that's kind of what I sip on throughout the whole evening. Or if I don't feel like I want to drink, then I just have my glass of water. It's not like people are going to judge you for not having a drink either. That's totally okay. But you also don't want to go like, again, overboard and be that, pr I, we, I have had that where like, Oh, you were the person at the conference last year. I remember that. You don't want to be that person either. So we're going to watch this really quick. This is about your personal introduction. How many of you have heard of a personal introduction? Okay. And what you see if the sound is. Okay, it's on. I can hear it. But you might have to turn it up.
So again, that's specific to career fair, but just to hear from employer perspectives, what they kind of like to hear. Um, when you're thinking about your personal introduction, that's really your way of, again, just introducing yourself to the people that you're talking to. So at tonight's event, it's even, you know, again, introducing yourself, saying your name, um, chatting a little bit, you know, I'm a master's degree student in mechanical engineering here at Michigan Tech. You know, you can even say I'm originally from here, or I'm kind of hoping to go into these types of industries. Again, it's different because this isn't a career fair. It's, it's a practice event. So, and they all know that. Everyone that's downstairs also knows it's a practice event. But just practice having those conversations and kind of figuring out, okay, when do I kind of float on to the next one? Um, again, it's not a, there's no, you have no stakes in this game as far as it like not going well. It's a practice event for everybody. Um, so we also have um, information about personal introductions. So you may have seen this sheet before. Um, so we can, if you want one, what I'll, maybe I'll do is just kind of start, take one down, pass it around. If you would like one, to think about your personal introduction before we go downstairs. But I know we have just about four minutes before we should work our way downstairs. Any questions that anyone has? Yeah. Uh, maybe not so much of a question, but somebody I don't know who was said back here, how do you, the religion doesn't let them shake hands with women. Uh, what was that? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess it's a thought. So, if somebody wants to shake your hand and you kind of refuse that, it's uh, you can leave a bad taste in your mouth, right? Uh, and he says that your wife's advisor wife. did that and yeah. she still doesn't like you right now. <laughs> she still doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you think somebody would would say to you about that? What's an accusation that they feel toward you, like when they do that, or when when that happens? What do you think they could say about you that's bad? I don't I don't get your question. Like what, what from their perspective, what does that person feel is wrong about that? I know, but this person, <laughs> this specific one just got angry and left the place. So we didn't say anything. What do you, what do you think she, could, she would say to you if she did say something? So uh, I, I saw a lot of people, um, you know, I, I, I did the same to a lot of people and some good guys actually, uh, some of them when I say, sorry, I cannot shake hand because of religious stuff or whatever. They say, oh, I didn't know that. It's like a new information they they, they uh, you know acquire. Even I don't know if you guys know Molly, the wife of the previous uh, chemistry chair. Whatever she was, she was very old, like sixty something years old, and she she actually apologized and said, it, it, "Oh, sorry for my inappropriate action." I said, "No, it's not. It's not like that." But still, you know, people really differ on this thing, but. We're just going to start calling a, stuff downstairs. Oh, perfect. Sounds good. If it's a restriction, a restriction for your for the other person, so I guess the best thing is to honor them. Okay. Uh, so don't force them to look bad. Okay. Uh, I have a I'll just, just oh, sorry, sorry. I think one thing that could be possible is say like you could say this is going to sound like I'm a bad person. Or this is going to seem like I don't respect you. This is going to feel like this is disrespectful, but my religion doesn't let me do that. I'm sorry. So it's basically saying, like, I see your perspective. Maybe you're not going to like this, but this is it. So a lot of people might say, like, oh, no, 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 it's okay, blah, blah, blah. This may seem like. Yeah, so I, I have a suggestion on what could be done in that scenario. So you could say that I'm recovering from a cold. I don't want to lie. How do you know you've done yeah. this before without, like, you know, this gesture, without even having to apologize, but just to say, it's nice to meet you. Rather, you know what I mean? It's, I don't know, it, as a suggestion, I don't, it's not yeah. always necessary to have to explain explain it or apo especially apologize because you have nothing to be sorry for it's just it's a it's um it's new to people and so if you just I, you know just for this is my greeting and that's how it is it's nice to meet you usually people like that except that one single occasion yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, with you, i mean if you had done that like when when you had said usually just hi it's nice to meet you i would take that as a greeting 
I would oh. probably mimic that. I yeah. Would just kind of. That's yeah. okay, but you know, sometimes the other person approaches you and say, "Hi, I'm yeah. somebody," and then you say. But I would just say, "Nice to meet you." Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. Yep. Yeah, it, you know, people do really do. And again, you can't you can't control what and they do. You can't uh, make people, everyone happy. That's the thing too. You can't make everyone. Yeah. So I know we're, I, I want to make sure that we get downstairs since we do have folks that are waiting to, to meet you all. Um, this isn't, don't feel like you have to go to this, but it's very low key. Um, we were only expecting 12 people as of yesterday, and then we had 38 sign up as of this morning. Uh, so we have, we have limited people to practice with um, outside of this room, but I would encourage you to also practice your introductions with each other as well and kind of practice some of those introductions with multiple people that are downstairs. When you go down there, we'll walk you down in just a second. Um, it, it's probably best to go and get your name tag first just so that you have that with you. Uh, and there'll be a little bit of a line there. There are, like I said, there's some beverages, we just have like soft drinks, um, some simple things. And then a couple of high top tables, but you can also just stand around. Um, but feel free to kind of mix and mingle and practice. We'll be there to help answer questions that you have uh, as well. But then you can also feel free to leave whenever you want to. The official end time is six. I don't know that it would really go that long for practice, but we wanted to be there if you wanted to do that. So I will, if you want to shut that down, I can take the group down. And before you leave Jacob asked those who did not sign in when they came in to please sign in before you leave and we'll head down to crew services <laughs>